hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. So 
Hello, welcome to St. Altman's Church. My name is James, I'm the Associate Minister here at St. Altman's. It is wonderful to be able to welcome you to celebrate Jenny's life this day. We come in celebration, we come in grief and sadness. We come together in worship and remembrance of a truly wonderful and clearly much loved woman. Just a few notices before we actually begin our service. Um, should the fire alarm go, we're not expecting a drill. Um, the fire exits are there, there, and back the way you came. Um, so if in the event of a fire, please remain calm um, and you will be directed to one of the nearest exits. Um, by those familiar with our building. There are refreshments um, after the service as well, which will be served in our hall, um, which is back through the doors you came. I'm going to suggest we attempt a one-way system, as there are quite a number of us. Um, so if you go back out of the doors you came in into the worship area, take a right down the hall towards where the toilets are, so if you need the toilet during the service, that is down the corridor and at the end, and you'll find all the toilets there. You'll then see a double door to your left as you go down the corridor, and that will take you into the hall um, towards where the refreshments are being served. There are seats available in the hall area. You're also very welcome to bring your refreshments back into the worship area um, and to mingle and to chat as you enjoy them as well. And then you'll find double doors directly opposite the ones that you'll just leave by. And so if we just operate in a sort of anti-clockwise fashion to come in and out of the hall, that will probably avoid too much congestion in the doorways. Everyone is welcome here in this building, whether you have come before, whether you have never set foot in any church before in your life, whether you are young or old, you are all very welcome here in this place. For the young and indeed the young at heart, um, we do have our creche and toy area set up by our chapel windows over there. And so if at any point during the service and indeed afterwards you would like to make use of that area, please feel free to do so. But now, shall we begin with a prayer? We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. Father in heaven, we praise your name for all who have finished this life loving and trusting you, for the example of their lives, the life and grace you gave them, 
and the peace in which they rest. We praise you today for your servant Jenny and for all that you did through her. Meet us in our sadness and fill our hearts with praise and thanksgiving for the sake of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to continue our service now um, with some sung worship led for us by our worship band. Would you please stand?
That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. And we declare that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore me, hope of a life spent with So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether
Please do take a seat and I'd like to invite Mark, Lucy and Sam to come up now for the first of our tributes to Jenny. Well, hello. Um, I'm, I'm Mark, um, Jenny's dad. My wife, uh, Linda's sitting down at the front. This is uh, Sam, her brother, and Lucy, her sister. We all got a little to say. We want to welcome you all here. Many thanks to all of you for coming to Derby, especially under the uh, circumstances with petrol. And uh, thank you also to those who've joined the service online. We particularly want to thank John T for all the dedicated work he's done in preparing this service, which can't have been an easy task. It seems quite a long time since Jenny passed away in, in May. And yet we find it so hard to believe that she has gone from this life. Barely an hour goes without remembering her in some way. But this service isn't to mourn Jenny's passing. It's rather to celebrate her life. Thankfully, we're, we feel able to do that. It was a good life, well lived, and our lives have all, all been made better by the time we spent together. Jenny was a wonderful daughter, always smiling and full of fun. Linda reminded me how from only six months old she would say, Ero, and smile at you. She was a very caring, loving and thoughtful person who touched many lives. She was so creative in many, many areas, particularly art and music, but sometimes dance and drama. She did sometimes struggle with anxieties, but she had a deep faith which carried her through it all. This showed the most strongly during her last few weeks, which she tackled with great courage, dignity and purpose. Her total belief was a great testimony, and it's made me personally rethink my faith. We had many great times together as a family, and we'll miss Jen more than I can describe. But we can smile and be thankful for the time we had together and for all that Jen achieved. She's left a huge legacy of friendships and close relationships and will be remembered by so many. We'll be reminded of her by Sophia and Peter as she grows up. We're so proud that Jenny was our daughter and look forward one day to rejoining her in heaven. Um, thank you, Dad. Uh, as Dad just said, thank you uh, for being with us today to celebrate the life of our sister Jenny. As I said, I'm Sam. I'm Jenny's older brother. And I think it's a real testament to Jenny's nature that so many people are here to give thanks for her today and to remember her both in person and online. And Lucy and I, uh, and Lucy will, will be speaking after me, will be giving thanks for Jenny and want to share some of our memories of our childhood and the lives we shared with her. And I'm going to take you right back to the beginning. Um, as Jenny was the youngest of the three of us, it was the case that we were expected to take on the duties of caring for her uh, and keeping her out of trouble, you know, looking out for her, just as you expect any older siblings to do, really. Unfortunately for Lucy and I, that was always an easy job because even as a small child, Jenny was the caring and thoughtful person we knew she would become as an adult. And it's really fair to say that you know a child is helpful when they offer to carry your trumpet and your bag home for you after school each day, even when they're only five. <laughs> um, and I would say that as a caring older brother, I always declined that offer of help, but... Uh, yeah, I never carried that trumpet home. 
All I can say really is that Jenny always carried that trumpet up St. James Road with a smile on her face, happy to be helping her older brother. And I realize I don't come off that well from that story, but as I always said at the time, uh, Jenny offered to do it, so who am I to tell her no? Through Chartered, we've had many happy memories of spending time with Jenny, who was always a bit younger than us. I'm five years older than Jenny and Lucy's seven. And even though she was younger, she always spended up, enjoyed spending time with us. Lucy and I were speaking earlier this week and we were remembering some family holiday times, such as the time we conquered Mount Everest at the French house. Um, Mount Everest is a privacy verge at the French house, which is probably about three feet tall. Um, but it entertained us and it entertained her. And I also remember entertaining Jenny by um, taking the empty box that the fridge, our fridge came in and creating Mr. Papadopoulos. Um, these memories of our holidays in the French house and the many unfortunate eventualities of our camper van holidays, the broken windscreens, roofs, gearboxes. Um, I could go on about the issues with that van for a while. Uh, I won't, because I'll tell you afterwards if you want to know all the stories. Um, but they spoke to happy family times spent together. And those are the memories we have of Jenny as a child, always happy willing to lend a hand and enjoying our company. And I know much like all of you here today, we miss her terribly, just as I know you also do. But we do rest firmly in the knowledge that Jenny lived a full life and it's testament um, that you're all here today. And she was loved again, you're all here today. So thank you very much for coming and, and being here to remember my sister. And I'm gonna hand over to Lucy now, who also wants to share some words about Jenny. Thank you. So as Sam has already mentioned, Jenny was definitely the baby of our family, seven years younger than me and five years younger than Sam. And so many of my memories of our childhood times together of me looking after Jenny. In fact, this was one of the things she mentioned herself as we reminisced together while she was in hospital. Funnily enough, she also remembered carrying Sam's trumpet up the hill and the fact that she really did want to carry it. Jenny was a delight as a child and as a little sister with a friendly, happy temperament and a very sunny disposition. A shared passion Jenny and I had growing up was for dancing, specifically ballet, modern and jazz dance. And we performed in a number of epic dance shows together, which became truly family affairs when mum made costumes and dad and Sam helped out with sets and backstage. And one of the times I remember having to step up as an older sister was when mum told me Jenny was struggling to learn the routine for some or other dance performance and had been berated by our colourful dance teacher for being defiant in not getting it. So I went through the steps with Jenny, we practised together and she got there in the end. But although our dance teacher often pushed students hard to get the best out of them, on this occasion her judgement was wrong, as the truth is there was nothing defiant about Jenny growing up. She was a truly lovely and sweet girl who became a beautiful and wonderful woman. And Sam and I were both lucky that we had her as our sister to share a wonderful, happy, fun-filled childhood with. But also that we each got the chance to live with her again as adults, which took us each forwards beyond sibling bonds and into adult friendships together. Sam lived with Jenny and Jonty at the bank when he took up his job at the University of Nottingham a few years back, also a time Jenny reminisced about fondly. And I lived with Jenny when I returned home for a couple of years in my mid-twenties while she was studying at college. At that point, it was lovely to get to know Jenny again as a young woman, not just a child, and we shared many more happy times together, mainly centred around a shared love of the kind of trashy TV you can get away with watching in your youth. The Gilmore Girls theme tune will always instantly take me back to happy days spent with Jen. During the difficult last days with Jenny, my husband Will said... Better to have known a Jenny and lost her than to have never known her at all. And while this is extremely hard to say, that is the heart of it really. That all our lives have been far, far better, happier, richer, because Jenny was in them. Soon after we lost Jenny, Will and I sought some escapism by watching the new Marvel series, WandaVision. I'm not sure Marvel are particularly well known for their profound, life-changing words of wisdom, but one quote from this series struck such a chord I don't think I'll ever forget it. In recognition of a moment of profound loss, one character states, what is grief if not love persevering? 
So today, despite our sadness, we give many, many thanks for Jenny, the person she was, all the happy times, and all the memories that she left each and every one of us. For our love for you, Jenny, certainly does persevere, and always, always, always will. Thank you for those wonderful words about Jenny. Our next tribute is going to be read by Daniel, and I just need to go and get the other microphone for you, Daniel. Thank you. My wife, Helen, has written some words, um, which I am going to read to you um, as if she was speaking. Jenny was born when I was three weeks old, and we spent a lot of time together as our mums were friends and attended the same church, St. James Road Baptist. It didn't take long before our friendship developed into something really special, and we were regularly round each other's houses, playing, chatting, laughing, and eating chocolate, ice cream, or cake. They are all treasured memories and will stay with me. We grew up and found many friends in our church youth group. We hung out together at every opportunity, whether in the park, when camping as a church, or dancing in a variety of settings. One of the things we did was 10 to 15 of us would squeeze into a four-man tent and spend the evening squashed and chatting. Jenny laughed a lot, and we will always remember her laugh. She was the one who was always looking out for us, looking out for other people, and she put others ahead of herself. She, tro she showed true kindness and selflessness at every opportunity. Being kind came naturally to her, which is one of the reasons why she was such a great friend. Later in life, it was so special to be bridesmaids for each other and to still be great friends, even though we lived further apart. It was lovely seeing her become a mum and seeing our children play together. She was one of those friends that however long it had been since we had last seen each other, we carried on where we left off. She was so creative. At church, she would sing, dance, and act. We even dressed up as grannies together for a church drama, which became so much fun, we did it multiple times. And a special reminder for many of us at the church is Jenny's sixth form college art project a beautiful collation of sketches of young children and other church members representing her church family. She wrote these words alongside it. This mural is here to remind you that God was there at the beginning of your lives, and he'll be there at the end. We saw Jenny live this out into her final days. She showed so much courage and faith and was a great example to us all. I'm sad that we won't get to make more memories on this earth. But I trust in where she has gone, and I know that it is a good place. We may have said goodbye for now, but it's not goodbye forever. And I look forward to more dancing and laughter together in another place and at another time. Thank you, Daniel. Now, if you, you, if you heard before the service, you may have seen um, several recordings um, of worship songs that Jenny led us in as a church family over the last 18 months when we weren't able to gather together in the church building. It was a real privilege um, to be able to have that facility and to hear those songs again. And Jenny is now going to lead us in our next song of sung worship um, in this service. So could I ask you to stand as Jenny leads us in worship?
comes unsure when my best for short still I sing you are Lord hallelujah 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 when the waters have run dry you alone stay Satisfy. I won't be thirsty in your courts, for I will sing. You are Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. When the darkness closes in And I've nothing left to bring Questions waiting, questions waiting at, the door, at the door Still I'll sing, sing you are Do please take a seat as Mandy and Helen uh, come up now to read our passages to us. Song of Songs. Chapter 2, verse 1. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. 2 Thessalonians 2.16 May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. 
Isaiah 43, verse 20. The wild animals honour me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Psalm 107, 13 to 14. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke them away from their chains. Luke 6, verse 37. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Psalm 139, verse 13. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Hebrews 6:19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Thank you both. As you'll see in your orders of service, each of the readings is taken from a reflection um, from a piece of artwork that Jenny did in her sketches. And Paul, if it's possible to um, have those slides just cycling through slowly as I speak, um, it would give people an extra chance to reflect on those images. Jenny was and is an inspiration to me of what it means to have faith in God. One of the stories Jesus told during his teaching was that of the wise and foolish builders. In the story from Matthew chapter 7, there are two builders. One builder builds a house on a rock, a firm, dependable foundation for the house, so that when storms come, the house remains standing. The other builder chooses the seemingly easier option of building on the sand. But when the storms come, the house collapses, leaving the builder with nothing. The message is that building a life of faith on Jesus is not the easy, quick option. It takes time, it takes commitment to build a life based on the teachings of Jesus. It takes effort to make the foundation of our lives the love of Jesus. Other places for building our lives may look easier. They may offer a quicker build, the promise of being able to get on with enjoying life faster and all that this world has to offer. But Jesus warns us that the danger of these foundations for life is that they will be unable to hold us when the storms come. The rock he promises to be will never fail us even in the worst of storms. Jenny knew this. Jenny lived this. She chose to make the foundation of her life the love and promise of Jesus. And when the storms came and the rain fell, her life of faith stayed safe on the rock of God's love. Jenny lived a life of loving God, and knowing that she was loved completely by God as well. Some of the passages we have just heard speak directly to this knowledge. In Jeremiah and Psalm 139, Jenny's images reflected on the knowledge that God had known her before she was even born, and that he knew her to the deepest parts of her being. This might be harder for us here today to accept than it was for Jenny. We might turn to the passage from Psalm 107 and ask, why did God not save Jenny from her distress? Why does he not save us from ours? Or the passage from Revelation and ask why God will not wipe away every tear now, why there is still death and mourning and pain. 
there are no easy answers to these questions. And it is right that we ask them. But the best answer I can give you today is the example I saw from Jenny's own response to the storm she faced in the last weeks and months of her life. I am sure she asked the questions of why and how could this be happening. But she never lost sight of the truth that she was loved and held by God. Her foundation stayed firm on the rock. The passage from Hebrews chapter 6 talks of having hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. The knowledge that whatever we face, ultimately Jesus has gone ahead of us, even into death, and has risen from the grave, and he offers us the promise of eternal life with him. I know that Jenny knew this hope. I know that she knew the love of God in her life. And I know that despite the pain and the sadness that she knew in the last few weeks of her life, I know that she never let go of her faith and the hope that she had in God and the promise of eternal life that he made to her. I know that that was indeed an anchor for her soul. I know this because when I visited Jenny in hospital, in the last days of her life. She embodied the reading from 1 John 4.18 that we heard earlier. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Jesus is perfect love and makes us perfect in love through lives lived in relationship with him. Jenny, at the end, knew sadness. She knew that there were things that she had always imagined she would be there to see that she would no longer be present for. She knew pain and discomfort. But Jenny, when I saw her, did not know fear. When I spoke to her, Jenny simply said she was ready. Ready to go to be with God, to go to the promise of eternal life. Fear had no hold over her anymore. Jenny was held in the perfect love of God and fear could not touch her. Jenny, in that time, was made perfect in the love of God. And she knew the perfect peace and confidence that that brings with it. Jenny's faith inspires me. In Jenny, I saw a person who was made perfect and fearless in the love of God. In her singing, in her artwork that she continued even in hospital, in the warm smile that welcomed everyone she met, in the love that she had for people. Jenny embodied the love of God, and at the end of her life, she knew it in its full perfection. Some of you here today may already know the love of God in your lives. And to you, I believe Jenny would want to say, never let go of that knowledge of love. Let that love be the anchor of your soul. Let it hold you firm in the fiercest storm. And let it always be making you more perfect in completeness of God's love. Some of you sitting here today may not know the love of God in your lives. And to you, I believe Jenny would want to say, there is a God who loves you just as you are. He wants you to know that love and to build a relationship with you. That there is a God who loves you so perfectly and completely that he sent his own son to live on earth and die for you, who rose from the dead and broke the power of death over all of us, that we could all accept the offer of eternal life with him. That we could all be made perfect in the transforming power of God's love for us. The offer is there. It is freely given. Let God be the anchor for your soul. Let God be your shelter in the fiercest storms of life. 
Let the love of God come into your life and fill you and know what it is to be loved perfectly and completely. And so let me finish now with the words we heard from the second letter to the Thessalonians. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. He strengthened Jenny. He will strengthen you. He loves Jenny, and he loves each and every one of you as well. Amen. We're going to stand again now as Jenny once more leads us in our sung worship. Do please have a seat. Karen and Wendy, colleagues from Abbeydale and Stanley House, are going to come and lead the next tribute for us.
Hello, everyone. My name's Karen, and I'm manager for Stanley House and Aberdale Nursing Homes. And we're here today because we had the enormous honour and privilege of having worked alongside Jenny. Um, and there's quite a few of us here today, so I represent quite a few of us. Wendy and I first met Jenny in 2015, and this was to be the start of a whole new era for activities at our care homes. We wanted to share with you a little bit about our Jenny, activities Jenny. If you've ever watched a Disney film where a character appears with a glow of loveliness around them, well, that was Jenny. Thankfully for us, Jenny wasn't a work of fiction. She was a delightful, kind and thoughtful colleague and everyone loved her. Endlessly talented, Jenny added her imagination and flair to every project. She was extremely dedicated to her work and always went the extra mile to bring fun and happiness to the residents and staff she worked with. Everyone was always welcome. Jenny had the gift of seeing the potential in every resident. Her manner was gentle and reassuring, patiently assisting with the task in hand, and it was clear that she felt safe, that they felt safe, and with her sensitive encouragement, you could see them grow in confidence. Valuing the importance of families, she always gave so much thoughtful consideration to include relatives. Jenny was selfless in her devotion to her job. She would do a 5K run and then come straight into work to run a cake stall for the fairs and not a hair out of place. Her car was a craft box on wheels. It was full of paper and baking equipment and glue and glitter. And when we heard she was expecting Sophia, we did wonder if she was going to have to get a roof rack for her. John T didn't escape Jenny's enthusiasm for a job either. He carved pumpkins for us, baked, painted a giant mermaid, to just name a few things. So John T, we thank you for that. We all look forward to meeting Sophia and then later Peter. Our residents enjoyed seeing Jenny's tummy grow and the foodie analogies as her pregnancies developed. What food is it this week, Jenny, they would ask. From poppy seed to Swiss chard to finally the watermelon, we excitedly awaiting the news of the safe arrivals. Jenny's talents as a wonderful musician and a beautiful singer came to the fore in January 2019, when we started our in-house choir, the Fine Fettle Singers. It was a joy to hear her voice ringing out, and boy, she had such patience with us all. She taught us how to listen to music as well as how to sing. We learned to pronounce, pronounce our T's and debated the pronunciation of dancers, us, and, or Jenny, dancers. It was such a fun time. Despite the logistical challenges, each home would take a turn to hosting the singing practices which meant we would escort quite a few residents from one home to the other. As you can imagine, crossing busy Duffield Road, we had to literally stop the traffic. So we suggested to our fit and well residents, despite their wheelchairs, that they would look straight into the eyes of the drivers and look sad so they would stop. <laughs> our Jenny, so honest, was aghast that we should be so cheeky. But it worked, and a few days in, Jenny could be heard issuing the same instructions. We do apologise to Jenny's family for leading her astray. <laughs> we even became a little bit famous as Radio Derby featured our choir on their breakfast show. What an early start that was. But butties supplied by the kitchen did help, and Derby woke up to the lovely sound of Jenny's voice that morning. Jenny was a devoted Christian. We were all aware of this, not because she spoke about it a lot, but in the way she lived her life. She always worked with love, compassion, kindness and dedication. Jenny was so wonderful to work with. Sorry, a kind and gentle soul. And we all loved her very much. Jenny continues to have a huge impact on Abbeydale and Stanley House and she's left an ongoing legacy of positivity and true Jenny-ness.
the right one. Yep. Yeah. I was honoured when John T asked me to help with this part of the service for many reasons, but particularly because one of my most cherished memories of my friendship with Jenny is the time that we spent working together at the Fairway, which is a care home in Watford, where Jenny is originally from. I was back home living with my parents while I finished my law exams, and Jenny was back at home with Mark and Linda, waiting until the day when she could finally marry John T. Jenny was a phenomenal care worker and activity coordinator. She was always smiling, singing, and lighting up the room. I have so many fond memories of wait working with Jenny, but there's one in particular that I can't get out of my head. To set the scene, I'll rewind to the day before this memory took place, when after working on an early shift, I headed over to Mark and Linda's house, where Jenny was having an appointment with the hairdresser and makeup artist for her wedding for a trial for her bridal hair and makeup. And of course, Jenny looked absolutely stunning. But then I was very surprised to arrive at work the following day to find Jenny in her usual work clothes, her trousers and top, combined with full bridal hair and makeup. <laughs> we all joked that day that Jenny must have slept like this <laughs> to keep her hair and makeup so absolutely perfect for work the next day. Such was her excitement about her upcoming wedding to John T. But I think also it was something more than that. It was also that Jenny loved her residents so very dearly that she wanted them to be a part of her special day too. She knew that they couldn't join her on her wedding day, so in the best way that she knew how, Jenny brought a piece of her wedding day to them. And of course, I was half expecting her to walk into our teeny tiny activities cupboard at one point and do a Superman style turnaround and come out wearing a wedding dress. But that didn't quite happen. So it came as no surprise to anyone that after Jenny married John T and moved here to the Midlands, she continued working with a passion to care for the elderly, and in particular, those affected by dementia. Jenny loved her work, and that's something we've heard so nicely spoken by Karen and Wendy. But Jenny's love for people with dementia and Alzheimer's went beyond just what she did in the care home. Back in March of this year, Jenny undertook the Jog on Dementia Challenge with the target of raising 100 pounds for the Alzheimer's Society. Jenny smashed her target both in terms of the distance that she ran, but also the amount of money that she raised. And this is where it starts to get difficult, so I hope you'll forgive me if I paraphrase what I wrote on social media a few months ago and what's now written on Jenny's fundraising page. In March, Jenny undertook a series of 5K and 10K runs to raise money for the Alzheimer's Society. As the symptoms of her cancer were beginning to show themselves, she was doing this. In April, Jenny shared with us the news of her cancer and that her journey to her everlasting home would be short. And as we all know, in May, Jenny left us to return home to her Heavenly Father. It sums up Jenny so perfectly that she exerted herself to help others in spite of everything that she was going through. Jenny's astonishing efforts and commitments touched many of our hearts and eventually she raised a phenomenal 2,605 pounds for the Alzheimer's Society. In recognition of this, the Alzheimer's Society has sent Jenny and John T a medal and running top, which Jenny requested should be framed and presented to Abbeydale and Stanley Holmes as a farewell tribute. So it's with great honour today that I would like to present this now to Karen and Wendy as Jenny's gift to them. Thank you very much. So thank you very, very much. This is something that Jenny talked about when I was, well, I feel truly privileged actually to have spent a little bit of time with her at the very end of her life. And she actually did talk about very openly wanting us to have this, which, you know, we're very humbled that she could talk about that at that time. Um, so we're so very touched by that. Um, and Jenny will forever be part of Abbeydale and Stanley House, part of the Abbeydale-Stanley House family. I'm sure everybody will agree that 
from Abbeydale and Stanley House. So thank you, Jenny, and thank you, John T. Sorry, and one final piece, um, just reading some words on behalf of John T um, to conclude. Like so many people, including our vicar Ian Mountford, Jenny's final weeks were made so much easier by being able to use the Nightingale Macmillan unit. It takes a special kind of person to work on a unit like this, and the staff at the unit were so dedicated and helpful, without exception. The empathy, humour and accommodation of requests was greatly appreciated as well as the bucket loads of tea and coffee. We'd like to make special mention of one of the hospital chaplains, Lou Greaves, who prayed with it and spoke to Jenny several times over these weeks, as well as whipping out a guitar for our renewal of vows, which he performed on the unit on our anniversary. Money going to the unit's fund helps to supplement the care with home comforts and additional therapy. Jenny laughed about the similarities of the activities available in the hospice and those that she offered in her care home. We thank you for any donations made, knowing that they will help to make others' weeks a little bit easier. Thank you. Gail is now going to come and give a, a tribute on behalf of John T. Thank you. These are the words of Jonty. It was the greatest joy in my life making memories of Jenny. Sorry. <laughs> this is such an honor, Jonty, but <laughs> it's difficult. From making family meals, holidays, trips to the playground, walking around parks, or even on countless occasions, sharing a hot chocolate or cheeky cider and falling asleep together on the sofa. Making memories as a family with Peter and Sophia is where I saw Jenny most content and happy. Jenny's love for Sophia and Peter was so tangible, it burned through her and was clear for anyone who saw them together. She always had a smile for them, as well as an abundance of patience to listen, to play, to paint with them, or to sing them to sleep. Walking in on Jenny at work once after she had forgotten to take her packed lunch, I felt so privileged to see her singing and dancing around the room, entertaining the staff as well as the residents. She had found a job that was so utterly perfect for her skills, and God really used her to improve people's lives, giving her a real heart for dementia awareness and for dignity and care. The more I knew Jenny, the prouder I became of her. I doubt that there are many people who deal with finding out they are dying with the grace, courage, and absolute faith that Jenny did. She was so selfless and embodied this to her final days, sharing words of love with her family. Thank you, Gail. Dave is going to come and lead us in our prayers now. I had the privilege of leading the youth group that Jenny and a number who've come here today grew up in. Um, being part of the St. James Road church family. Many of you are here as well. Um, you supported a whole crowd of those people who grew up. You witnessed Jenny's testimony of faith in Jesus Christ at her baptism, a faith that we've heard about, that she grew in, that shaped her, a faith that shared, she shared with others in her life. We've heard lots of memories of Jenny Let's take some time now to bring them before God in prayer. I'm going to name a few different areas and in each we will in quiet bring those prayers before God. Um, they might be words, but as Jenny has done, they might be pictures. 
They might be memories. They might be questions. They might be tears. Let's uh, maybe close your eyes and bring those memories as prayers. Let us pray now to remember one or more of those activities that we knew Jenny take part in, in her life, that we want to give special thanks for now. Father God, we thank you for the many ways Jenny used the gifts, talents and opportunities that you gave her to live out a life full of love and service to others with creativity and joy. We thank you for your work of love seen in and through her. Let's pray now remembering Jenny's faith and how it guided her in every way, how it might have touched you. Jesus, we thank you for your life on earth, for your call for us to follow you, which Jenny responded to, a way of life walked by faith, in hope and with love. Thank you that you showed a way through death to life in a new heaven and a new earth. Let us pray now, remembering Jenny's character and the ways that she lived and approached life. Think of the words which you might use to have described her, how she impacted you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the breath of life given to Jenny, for the way that you gifted her and enabled her to make use of those gifts in her life. We thank you for her gentleness. We thank you for her kindness. We thank you for her generosity. We thank you for her creativity, her fun, her energy. Help us to learn from Jenny's life, to learn from her faith. Father God, inspire us as we look forward. Thank you that you help us when we pray, when words fail. Let us now pray for ourselves and one another. Imagine placing yourself and the people you're praying for into God's hands. Father God, we place ourselves in your hands. Let us pray for those Jenny knew in her life at work, her neighbours, the church and her friends. Let us pray for the wider family, for Jonty's family, for Mark, for Linda, for Lucy, for Sam. Let us pray for John T, for Sophia, and for Peter. Jesus, we lift John T, we lift Sophia, we lift Peter to you. Help us to hold them in prayer. Help us to support them over the time ahead as they have need. 
Help them to know your love and your peace and your life. Father God, creator of all things, giver of life, giver of new life in Christ Jesus, comfort us by your Holy Spirit in our time of sorrow and grief. Lord God, we have brought our prayers of thanks to you. Help us to remember and celebrate Jenny's life and to be inspired by it as we seek to look forward. Help us, like Jenny, to live life with hope, to live life by faith, to live in your love. We offer all these prayers, these words, these thoughts, our tears. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Dave. We're now going to hear a prayer that Jenny recorded last spring in preparation for Peter's baptism. And we're going to hear Jenny read that to us now. a prayer for Peter on his baptism and for Sophia to use in her life too. It's by Keith and Christine Gessie from a song. Before you close your eyes to sleep, I have promises. I have a promise still to keep. As I hold you in my arms, I pray your little frame grows strong and faith take hold while you are young. This is my prayer for you. Hold my hand, I'll teach you the way to go. Through the joys, through the tears, the journey of these years. May you trust him till the end. May you trust him till the end. This world is not as it should be, but the Saviour opens eyes to see. All oh, that's beautiful and true. Oh, may his light fill all you are. And the jewel of wisdom crown your heart. This is my prayer for you. Hold my hand. I'll teach you the way to go. Through the joys, through the tears, through the journey of these years. He is with us till the end. He is with us till the end. You'll travel where my arms won't reach. As the road will rise and, the lead your, and will lead your feet. On a journey of your own, may my mistakes not hinder you. But his grace remain and guide you through this is my prayer for you. Take his hand and go where he calls you to. And whatever comes, seek him with all your heart. This will be my prayer for you. Our Father, hear my ceaseless prayer. Keep them in your care. before our band leaders in our final songs of sung worship together. We're going to take a time of quiet. We have heard memories of the wonderful person that Jenny was, the amazing impact she had on so many people and so many lives. We have prayed, we have worshipped. But now I encourage you just to take a moment of quiet to lift your own prayer to God. Your prayer may be words, your prayer may be pictures. Your prayer may be simply holding your own grief out to God. Your own thanks for the impact Jenny had on your life. You may simply want to hold your own favourite personal memory of Jenny in your heart now but we're going to take 
a moment of quiet for us to lift those prayers and memories now. Amen. Can I invite you to stand as our band leaders in our final songs of sung worship together today?
are constant in the trial and the change we want Yes, want me to remain. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love is higher than the mountains, higher than the mountains that I face.
Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. You're going to come and help me for this final bit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Do you want to hold that? Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Children are always welcome in this church. <laughs> it has been a fantastic privilege to gather with you all today in our sadness and in our celebration of Jenny's life and all that she meant to each and every one of us. Please do, if you are able, stay for refreshments after the service. As I said before, they'll be served in our hall if we can manage a sort of anti-clockwise one-way system um, for gathering refreshments and then mingling. That would be helpful just to avoid too much congestion, but please do stay. It would be lovely to share memories of Jenny together. Let's pray together. Neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant to us, Lord God, to trust you not for ourselves alone, but also for those whom we love and who are hidden from us by the shadow of death, that as we believe your power to have raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, so we, may we trust your love to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless everyone. Daddy.
i 
In the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the
of Christ was born and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away jesus take your place jesus take your place let all the other names fade away let all the other names fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your
gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. Never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. 